All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at the differences between a split thickness skin graft and a full thickness skin graft. So when we say split thickness skin graft, what is the composition? It contains the epidermis and a part of the dermis. Whereas in a full thickness skin graft, of course, the epidermis and contains the entire dermis and the adnexa. What is the prerequisite for a split thickness skin graft? Prerequisite means how the wound should be. The split thickness skin grafts, they survive on a less vascular bed. So even if the, the defect that we are trying to cover isn't ideal, it's still okay. But for a full thickness skin graft, it we require an ideal or good vascular bed because it needs a lot of it needs a good blood supply for it to survive. Whereas split thickness skin graft, you can think it think of it as a very thin person, whereas a full thickness skin graft is like a healthy person needs more nutrition, whereas a thin person can survive on less less than ideal conditions. Then contraction. The moment we harvest the skin graft, there is some contraction instantly, which is called primary contraction. So it is minimal in case of split thickness skin graft, but it always undergoes secondary contraction. That is, the wound bed is going to contract whether you put the skin graft or not. So when we put the split thickness skin graft, it will contract less initially because we are taking less of the dermis so all that elastin and all that is less so there is primary contraction is minimal but then when it is not very strong so when the wound contracts it's not able to resist it and it contracts with the wound so it always undergoes secondary contraction whereas for full thickness skin graft primary contraction is more all of the dermis is taken so that all the elastic fibers are there so the moment we cut it and harvest it there is like 40 percent primary contraction but the secondary contraction along with the wound bed is minimal so there is minimal secondary contraction next is sensation when we apply the skin graft somewhere on a defect will there be sensory recovery on that side so in splitting a skin graft the sensory recovery is faster but the ultimate amount of sensory recovery is poor whereas in full thickness skin graft the sensory recovery is slower but superior so it's like slow and superior whereas split thickness skin graft is fast but poor but the other one is slow but superior all right so then the indication of split thickness skin grafts so split thickness skin grafts are ideal for large surface defects and for less optimal conditions whereas full thickness skin graft is most useful in small excisional defects of the head, neck, and hand. The graft take is more favorable for split thickness skin grafts and there is less risk of loss. Like all, I already said, a very thin person does not need much nutrition to survive. Whereas a healthy person needs a lot of nutrition. So there is higher risk of loss in suboptimal conditions. So it needs an ideal or good vascular bed. Then the donor side. The donor side of the split thickness skin graft heals quickly and spontaneously and that same side can be reused after complete healing. Whereas for the full thickness skin graft, the donor side requires primary closure or if we are not able to do primary closure, we need grafting. Grafting with what? With a split thickness skin graft. So I take a full thickness skin graft from here, a large one, imagine just I'm not going to take from here, but let's suppose we take a big full thickness skin graft with the intention of closing it primarily. But if we are not able to close it primarily, we will have to cover that defect with a split thickness skin graft. Right, then the advantages of split thickness skin graft. Uh, these are that uh, it's possible to cover large areas, it's better graft take, and it is a easily adaptable procedure. And full thickness skin graft, the advantages are that we can get be better color match. Like for example, we want to do on the face so we can take from behind the ear. So we'll have better color match. There's uniform texture and transfer of dermal elements. And there is potential for growth. 
So in cases of syndactyly, we have released it when we do full thickness skin grafting and as, it's, as the finger grows, when the child grows, the skin will also stretch. The disadvantages of split thickness skin grafts are that it is least, there is least resemblance to original skin. So the look is very poor. There is considerable secondary contraction and then there is abnormal pigmentation and increased susceptibility to future trauma. The full thickness skin graft disadvantages are that there is a limited donor supply like the behind the ear, supraclavicular area, the elbow crease, wrist crease, the hypotenure eminence, the groin and such sites and they can be transfer of unwanted structures like hair. For example, we take from the groin area from the inguinal region and we go a little bit too medial then that pubic hair may be transferred to the hand right if you are doing the full thickness skin graft on the hand so yeah that is the split thickness skin graft versus full thickness skin graft differences i hope it was useful for you and if there's any other topic you would want me to make videos on do let me know don't forget to subscribe like the video and see you in the next one.